waters young to the hearts of a boy and girl in love. Like most Americans, George Pilger here and his best girl are outdoor-minded. Their greatest pleasure in George's new outboard motor is their ticket to the peaceful enchantment of lake and stream. And if George can't resist the temptation to show off a bit, small wonder... Not too many years ago, an outboard was about as easy to handle as a Republican at a Democratic committee meeting. Starting one was roughly equivalent to going three fast rounds with Joe Lewis. If you survived, you bought a pair of oars. But this new motor of George's, ah, that's a different story. And easy to start, man, you don't pull the starter cord, you just lean on it and away you go. As soon as George finishes undressing, we'll be off for a mad dash over the rolling deep. What'd you expect, George? Gremlin? Uh, better hurt against it? Uh, you better lean a little harder this time, George. Uh, huh? Well, just keep at it, George. We have another outboard date to keep out on the Rogue River in Oregon. Here's an outboard rig tailored to the needs of a man who's more concerned about where he's going than where he's been. Resort owner Larry Lucas and young friend Kenny King try their hands at rapid transit on the rugged road. This is one case where the right hand better know what the left hand is doing or overgoes the outfit Larry and all. With one hand guiding the pillar, the other making a running transom adjustment, this navigator's nightmare calls for death maneuvering, not prescribed for Central Park sailors. It takes a practice eye to read the foamy frenzy that is the Rogue Rapids. A split second is all you get to pick a course, out guess the tricky buffeting current, and spot the shallow rocks. And take it from Larry, a prop load of power is a handy thing to have backing you up when you face the challenge of the road. Here's a really rough go. This stairway in the river rises four feet over a 20-foot stretch of riverbed. That's a tough climb for any man's outboard. Will the... Oh, no. Uh, cameraman? Not now. Later, much later. And it looks like up and over they go. A tough climb, but typical of rogue water. There may be easier ways to go for a boat ride, but none more thrilling. Cruising up the river, better betting after the stormy violence of the rogue's white water. Here in the Oregon semi-wilderness lie great stretches of the lofty grandeur that is America, where the fish duck skitters over the water with startled amazement as he perceives the man-thing on his trail. And in the pools and deep to the swift-running road lurk the steelheads and salmon, about to tip the scales at 10, 12, even 14 pounds. Chinook lunkers to lure stout-hearted anglers. And towering in the background, the jagged, soaring contours of the Rockies. Plummeting downriver now, our adventurers race the current, streaking at breakneck speed over the obstacle-laden course, matching wits, brawn, and staying power with the treachery of the river. Here, a miss of the motor or a wrong twist of the wrist means disaster. Yes, it's a top outboarding thrill, challenging the mighty road. Outboard thrills come in king-size packages down along the east coast of Florida, where the more intense of the great American fishing fraternity gather to track big game fish in their native haunts. For many a fisherman, one of the hundreds of bait boat liveries like this one has been his jump-off place to high adventure. Lo, the eager angler. A drawing room cynic once defined him as the sucker in the boat who deludes himself that all of the poor fish of this world are in the water. But this pair of real happy characters seem to know what they want and need. Tackle that's light enough to give the chap on the other end of the line a sporting chance, yet tough enough to handle the big one they hope they'll run into. Time was when deep sea fishing was strictly for gold-laden refugees from Wall Street and the social register. A hundred dollars a day for a charter boat plus assorted high ante incidentals represented the kind of haze the average fisherman didn't have plenty of. Then came the revolution in outboard. With the appearance of light, powerful, inexpensive motors like this Mercury 10-horsepower job that the boys have, deep-sea fishing became a much more democratic pastime. Any man who has labored long and patiently trying to start a stubborn, old-fashioned outboard will appreciate the amazing ease of starting... Uh, 
cameraman. No. Thank you. Uh, as I was saying, we'll appreciate the ease of starting and simplified operation of new outboards like this Mercury the boys are using. Whether he's after pan, fish, or whales, as he heads out, every true fisherman is tantalized by a small, quiet voice inside him saying, This time, I'll get the big one. And these waters off Fort Lauderdale are especially conducive to small, quiet voices talking about getting big ones. For this is the domain of the Tackle Smashers, the glamorous tail-walking Atlantic sailfish, the ferocious lightning fast barracuda, and of course that ever-present cannibal of the ocean's jungle, the shark. These waters being strange to our fishermen, their first problem is to locate the fish. How better than to ask the man who fishes for a living? Time out from your knit and partner to give us the lowdown. Where do we go from here? For fish? Chucks, that's no problem. Just head out that away. You can't miss. Start the Mercury, boys. Time's a wasting. Okay, here's where the man said. Oh, bring on the action. A turn at running the motor, then a turn at the rod is the way of this kind of fishing, since best results are obtained by trolling. And here's where a versatile motor pays off. Every Mercury made from the three and a half horsepower Comet to the 25 horsepower Thunderbolt will idle down to a smooth, consistent troll. You will pardon me for mentioning it, girl, but isn't that a shark? Yes, old saber tooth in person. All right, hit him. And you've got yourself an argument, mister. Easy does it. Spare the rod or spoil the tackle. No fancy Dan in a fight is the shark. Just a good old-fashioned slugging match. Nice bit of maneuvering there with the motor, keeping the line in the clear. When shark knows he's in the battle of his life. Riding close to the surface now. Just waiting for a bit of slack or a sign of weakness at the other end. Last round of a tough fight. 100 pounds of bone and muscle brought reluctantly to gas. Don't miss with that gap. He didn't. It's all over with the ride home. The boys elect to tow their catch back instead of bringing him aboard. With other sharks in the vicinity, they run the risk of winding up with nothing but a jawbone on the end of the rope when they get back, but that's better than having Jack the Ripper for a boating companion. All over but the photographic evidence. Smile pretty for the people. Thank you, Brother Shark, for providing another outboard thrill of 1949. Bobby Blase, sportsman who finds battling sharks pretty tame stuff. Florida has more exciting attractions. There is the manta ray, for example. This is the tail end of a six and a half hour battle between these two lads and a 2,000 pound manta. Faced with the problem of wearing down their opponent without angering him, they matched his strength against the mercury throughout the long struggle. And with only this thin shell of a boat between them and a ton of sudden death, they succeeded. The great devil fish, when aroused, can outpull a 55-foot boat, and when he takes to the air, can smash a boat like this to kindling in a single blow. Shaped in the proportions of a giant flying wing, this fellow measures 14 feet across and has a mouth three feet wide. And now for the edification and amazement of all concerned, including the ray, our daring young friend is going to try a bit of rayback riding. And this little stunt is loaded with dynamite. Should the manta summon his reserve energy for a final burst of violence? Well, that's all, brother. Easy now. And there it is. Man rides manta. He has a hook in either side of the ray's mouth and ropes leading back for reins. Hard back on the reins now to bring the massive head up to the surface. And up he comes, docile and responsive to the reins as a well-trained horse. Though similar, it's doubtful if rayback riding will ever replace surfboarding in the affections of the water sportsman. Nor is it likely to improve the status of our friend here as a good insurance risk. Hard to believe as you see it gliding smoothly along that rays like this one have run amok and killed many an unwary boater. Well, all's well that ends well. And the giant manta heads for deep water, there to be turned loose after providing us with another of our thrills of 1949.